Surely African. Hey, welcome to the only show that brings you happenings in the world of diplomacy and international relations, diplomatic affairs. My name is Harriet Nati. This is the special Easter edition and we wish all of you a happy Easter. Now we have some very interesting stories in this episode of diplomatic affairs. I will be sharing the headlines with you and we will come back from the break and give you all the details. A Ministry of Foreign Affairs and regional integration cautions Ghanaian travelers to conflict areas. Ghana, Malawi reach visa waiver agreement. European Union holds West Africa Fusion Arts Expo. Third edition of African Music Business Dialogue held here in Accra. And we also have the Embassy of Denmark um, holding an orchestra concert right here in Accra. Bashiri Dumaye Fire is Senegal's president elect. We have all the details right after this break. Welcome back. The show is Diplomatic Affairs. My name is Harriet Nati. Now to our first story, starting from home. Let's take you to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integrations press release. I'm cautioning Ghanaian travelers to avoid conflict areas. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has advised Ghanaians to avoid conscription and non-essential travel to conflict areas around the world. The ministry, in a statement shared with Diplomatic Affairs TV, cautioned the traveling public to be wary of the activities of middlemen, agents purporting to secure citizenship, resident permits, and job offers in conflict areas and in countries at war, as those journeys were perilous and compounded with dire consequences. In light of the ongoing conflicts and the risk of conscription in certain countries or religions around the world travelers were strongly advised to exercise caution and carefully consider their travel plans good news for africa in the bid to enhance bilateral relations or economic diplomacy between the two countries, the governments of Ghana and Malawi have reached a visa waiver agreement to allow their citizens to travel visa-free. The two countries desirous of strengthening their bilateral relations and existing cooperation had entered into an agreement on a visa waiver regime for holders of ordinary diplomatic and service passports which took effect from February 7, 2024. Now, accordingly, travelers may transit through, depart from, and stay in the territory of both countries for a cumulative period of up to 90 days without resources to work within a calendar year. A statement issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration said on Wednesday. It's also urged the traveling public to take note of the new visa waiver agreement and enjoy seamless travel. Let's talk about showbiz diplomacy, shall we? Now, the European Union in Ghana has invested a total of 36,000 cities in some three young artists who emerged winners at this year's EU West Africa Fusion Artist Residency and Expo. Now, the event, which aimed at equipping young artists with a needed exposure in the creative industry, received 190 applications from young artists across West Africa. 
In his speech, the European Union Ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Ichad Ramiandraswa Razali, said the initiative which succeeded in unearthing talents of young creatives across West Africa and other member states will position them as viable products for the arts market. Let's take you to the residents. It's about creating bounds, friendship, and links between Ghana, neighboring country, the rest of West Africa, and the continent. We support art and creative industry as well for the potential for job creation and growth for the continent. We do so as well because we honestly believe that it's the best way as well to equip Ghana and the neighboring countries and its youth in particular to prepare the future, to prepare a future which is not limited to fintech or farming or usual programs that we are uh, funding. There is a space for culture, there is a space for creation, there is a space for creative industries. We also see arts as a medium to promote culture and to foster connections. As I mentioned, art is international, it breaks border, it builds bridges between communities, between people, between countries and continent and for the European Union. The Fusion Residency and Expo helps to encourage cultural exchanges between Europe, Ghana, Benin and the West, the rest of West Africa. Still on Creatives, the third edition of the African Music Business Dialogue has been held in Accra under the theme, Our Sound, Our Identity, Our Revenue, Collaboration, Innovation and Global Impact of African Music. The dialogue focused on African music and music industry specialists who shared knowledge about the music industry. 
founder of the African Music Business Dialogue, Enoch Nanayao Odru Ajay, known in music circles as Trigmatic, said African music, which transcends borders, empowers artists, and drives innovation, will leave an indelible mark on the global stage. Uh, music and arts, as we all know, has the power. It transcends boundaries and brings people together in ways that um, other industries struggle to do. Um, we've seen that after, after, I mean the AFCT, uh, AFC FTA um, has been launched. It's been launched. It was launched a while ago. But music is already doing what um, after six to do. Um, we've done it in so many forms. Um, as I'll say, in creative arts, we're already collaborating. I can do a song with somebody in Nigeria, not having to even go there. And already we decide to shoot the video in South Africa. That means a designer or a video director in South Africa gets paid um, somebody. So the creative art is already doing it. However, we're the only part of the conversation that is relegated to the back. And so I think the more we highlight our importance, the more we highlight our contribution towards um, economic growth, towards um, Africa's growth in, in, in its totality, it it's, it's will be very well. So There's a degree of growth, a degree of development when it comes to the arts in this country. How well are we in quote milking that opportunity? I see a lot of complaints I hear a lot of complaints most of the time. What people do not know is that the art industry is not the bank. The art industry is not, people think that the fact that I am in it, I must make money. No. Some are complaining that the music industry is not doing well. Are you sure Stoneboy will say the same? Are you sure Sarkozy will say the same? One of the central things about music ecosystems is that it's not just about the individual. It really is about creating the landscape. How are we going to change this landscape so that it better represents the interests of, new, of artists here, music artists and all the supporting artistry around that and industry and industry individuals around that. What's going to change that narrative when we talk about supporting artists? What is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is the environment that enables artistry to not just be generated, but also to, to thrive in a sustainable way. And that's what we look at in terms of the music ecosystem. We look at, uh, we, we are basically researchers, we are professionals, we're looking at how we can create a sustainable environment. And in order to do that, as Em quite rightly said, we need to know who are the participants in that environment. What's the landscape around that environment? That includes demographics, whether it be in terms of age, gender, who are the participants? Who are the artists? What is the infrastructure? Um, venues, uh, music studios, um, other types of performance spaces. Um, uh, Genres, what genres are being listened to? So the music ecosystem is the actual platform from which everything else emanates. <laughs> Ultimately, what you find with African entertainment in general, it is not regulated. Yeah. Now, there, there may be some regulation, but if you look at that regulation and you look at the implementation, they're just diametrically opposed. Yeah. So before I came on today, I was speaking to a few of the... Uh, uh, my Guinean contacts and, and just trying to get a feel for what's going on in, um, in Ghana. And one of the things that came up was collecting agency. Mm. And he just gave me a narrative, just a very brief narrative of, of what happens with the person in charge of the collecting agency. That person gets elected, but then every year, Attorney General has to renew their mandate. Mm -hmm. And apparently, the guy who's there right now has not been uh, speaking nice things about the government, so he's not been... So that, these are the problems. And then when you think about investors, yeah. investors need clarity. That's investors it. need clarity. But the investors in the music industry in particular, I would term them as specialized investors. Mm. Invariably, 
they're not looking, people who invested or who have a, a choice, okay, I might invest some of my money in, 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 in fashion, in mm. selling clothes and whatever, or I might invest some of my money in entertainment. They're not coming to entertainment to look. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So a lot of the investors in entertainment are people who have an interest, like yourself, you have an interest in entertainment, yes, you were yeah. an artist, okay, I'm going to invest. Well, that's normally who you have. These people coming together, we have an example there, yeah, when you spoke about your artist, mm going viral and then not knowing what to do absolutely he's just a, a guy who loved entertainment probably had access to money and he, he thought oh there's a guy in the area or a girl in the area that's talented i'll put my money into it that's the challenge mm. the mm. challenge I'm a, I'm a serial investor i own multiple companies mm. so i know when you're going into invest you need to understand data you need to understand that market you need to understand the segments you, you need to understand the trends and these trends need to, to go over years in, in, in many cases. I think there's some cultural implications here, but being that I've been in the field firsthand, I mm. can speak to the experience. Yeah. You know, growing as an artist in New York City in, in that industry and then coming here, obviously I knew that there would be huge structural differences because America is a superpower, Ghana is a developing nation, there's going to be differences. But I didn't realize how how stark and intense those differences were going to be. I wasn't aware that, I mean, we use the term ecosystem, and yes, it's relevant, but I personally wouldn't call this industry an, an ecosystem or even an industry at all, because mm -hmm. none of those things are really in place. There's no government yeah, yeah, subsidizing yeah, programs for yeah, artists. Mm -hmm. There's no, artists still aren't getting royalties, and 51 out of 54 nations in Africa have a viable, royalty program where artists are getting their residuals but Ghana does not and Ghana has was dubbed as you know one of the leading nations of this continent Senegal has been in the news for all the right reasons, making history. It appears a new wind is blowing when it comes to politics on the African continent. Now, at 44 years, Basiru Dumai is set to become Senegal's youngest president, a remarkable achievement considering he has never held a national elective office before. His victory has been acknowledged by his opponents, signifying a moment of unity and acceptance within the country's political sphere. His journey to the presidency was not without challenges. Prior to the election, he endured seven months of incarceration alongside Osmani Sonko before being released on March 14 under an amnesty law initiated by President Maki Sall. Despite the setback, the former tax inspector wasted no time and embarked on an intense election campaign across the nation, culminating in a closing rally in Mbo, his hometown, his hometown region. The outcome of the election was met with jubilation by his supporters who gathered in large numbers to celebrate the historic and unprecedented victory. Additionally, he received congratulatory messages from his opponents, President Saul, and numerous other African countries, highlighting the significance of his win on the international stage. Meanwhile, President Nanado Dankwa Ekufu Ado has also felicitated him for the decisive and resounding victory in one of Africa's few stable democracies, which is yet to taste a coup after independence from France in the year 1960. Now, talking of cultural or showbiz diplomacy, the Danish embassy here in Accra has held a musical concert as part of enhancing relations between Ghana and Denmark. The concert, which brought together the international community and the Ghanaian public, witnessed the Danish orchestra known as the Total Hip Replacement performing renditions of authentic songs which kept guests on their feet for hours amidst networking and camaraderie at the residence of the Danish ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Tom Norin. Speaking briefly before the commencement of the concert, the envoy of Denmark to Ghana emphasized on the key essence of soft power through tourism, arts, and culture to break barriers and foster cooperation and partnership between countries. I can tell you 
that I, I, I won't tell you we got it wrong on what we're doing, but I can tell you we should actually be looking at the band right behind us and listen to that band right behind us because they are the whole synergy that we're looking for. When you talk about building partnerships, building relationships, and building understanding between cultures. Because this is a band that comes from Denmark, but they have been for some years now, been playing with and getting a lot of inspiration from Ghana and from Ghanaian musicians. In a way that I think that if we listen to these guys today, we wouldn't think they were Danish. On the other hand, I'm quite sure that the Ghanaians here won't think that it's Ghanaian either. But when you listen to it, when it's played, when they are playing, it is real synergy, real beauty, countries and cultures and ideas and spirits coming together in one. That's really all I want to say, apart from hoping that you will also, all of you, come together in one, have a good time, have a few drinks, have a few laughs, and if you should feel so inclined, there is grass out here. It's not really something that's going to hurt you, even if you fall. So you're very welcome to also dance to the great groovy beats of total hip replacement and, and that I have to say, a read up, Anya Kofu, but I think it means and friends. So please enjoy the evening. I'll hand over the microphone and the stage to the band. Don't let the end fall on the ground. 
Too soon. This is where we draw the curtain to today's production as we let you in on all the stories making waves in Ghana's diplomatic circles, Africa, and the rest of the world. My name is Harriet Nati, and we look forward to seeing you same time next week. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.